if you don't have enough hang time while jumping, suffer with getting upwind, or can't make your kite loops be fast enough, then you definitely have a problem with line tension. And today we are going to examine precisely this Im most important and most underestimated phenomenon in kiteboarding. Hi guys! Not knowing how to preload your kite lines is like kicking an underinflated soccer ball. You will spend too much of energy to eliminate its softness before it really flies. Same applies to your kite. Whenever you want to steer the kite, first you'll have to eliminate the slackness in lines and canopy before you actually steer it. Same idea works if you're initiating a jump. Your kite also will have to spend some energy to eliminate power line slackness before it starts to lift you up. It might sound like a minor issue, but it's not. But wait, you would say, good kite lines have almost zero elasticity, so line tension should be something binary. There is either full tension or zero tension, right? Yes but you can definitely feel that something is changing gradually as you start to resist the pull of your kite. What is that? There are lines arc effect and leading edge elasticity. You can see these back lines having a lot of slack, but still affecting the steering of a kite. Front lines look straight, but if you have a closer look, there is also an arc there. It is created by the mass of line itself plus wind drag. And faster you go, more drag you have, more arc you have. You can think about it as a bow that you are pulling every time you resist against the power of kite, therefore eliminating the slack of your power lines. That's how you feel the gradient of line tension. Apart from lines, your kite itself is not solid. Its leading edge acts as a spring which bends depending on how strong the lines pull it towards you. It can open and close depending on line's load. You can see how active it works to compensate yanks of power when the wind is full of gusts and the water is full of chop. So line tension is responsible for preloading your kite and lines for faster reaction. But that's not all. Another important aspect is that while being anchored to you, your kite creates some lift while having some angle of attack. All these angles in this system create one rule. Increasing pressure on the lines will force the kite to move closer to the edge of the wind window. As a result, high line tension makes you less overpowered, helps you to go sharper upwind and have not horizontal but vertical higher jumps. Okay, so you have to resist the pull to eliminate lines arc and canopy slackness. But how much you have to resist? Are there any numbers to compare? How can we measure line tension? I did this job for you guys. So we have a hand scale here. I did some basic waterproofing. However, it kept dying after every filming session. It is fixed to a harness now, showing the amount of load in kilograms. I've wrapped the rope two times around the hook to reduce the load, since it's maximum 50 kilos. Now you will have to multiply the readings by four to get a true load. Let's go to the beach and see. You have around 25 kilograms of load while standing on the beach. It's around 20 knots and the 10 meter core XR6. If I do a jump, it will show around 80 kilos at the takeoff. I am 75 myself. Now the most interesting part. Cruising upwind in a relaxed stance gives us about 30 kilograms of load, which is the same you would feel just standing on the beach. Let's do a minor jump and we'll see the same 80 kilograms of load we had on the beach jump. But let's accelerate like we would do for a real high jump with your kite low, your board fully engaged. It shows around 80 kilos, peaking over 120 kilos sometimes. Amazing! It's one and a half times more than a minor jump load and my own weight itself. Most modern kites are designed to operate properly at this high tension level. However, vast majority of users never even reach it. Note the line tension going up and down. If you feel and use that peak load to send the kite up, 
it will make an incredibly fast and effective leap to 12, still being close to the edge of the window, creating a pure vertical lift. And this is a real secret of jumps, kite loops and many other things. Being able to ride with high line tension in average and knowing how to feel, control and use peaks of this tension to send the kite to 12 for a jump. Now you know that riding a proper stance feels like having your own weight on the hook, something like when you are hanging like this or even one and a half times heavier. Are you able to ride and have the same feeling on the water? If not, that is the reason why you cannot jump really high. My advice, first master your edging, learn to keep the board fully engaged during edging and pushing off on the pre-jump phase to keep high average tension in your kite line spring. Don't use the power too early, learn to ride powered. Second, learn to listen what is going on on your harness hook, try to detect and use peaks of tension to steer the kite for jump, perform a kite loop or start a simple surface transition. I did a lot of work to share the details of how to do it right in my learning to fly series. Please take time to learn more secrets on how to master a proper stance, ride with lots of lines load, create and use peaks of line tension to jump high. You will also support my further work. And remember, modern kites are designed to fly with significant amount of tension in the lines and most of the people nowadays still just not using them properly, trying to find a better kite which just won't work. Let's change it for better. Share this video to spread the word. Ride hard, keep your lines loaded with power and see you in the next episodes.